Hello, everyone. This is Matt Buckman with the Southern Illinois Violence Prevention Project. Um, what I'd like to do today is uh, provide information for a bidders conference related to the recent RFP that is being published and released in uh, for multiple counties, um, specifically looking at services for Jefferson, Franklin, and Jackson counties in Southern Illinois. At this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the video or the RFP itself. You should already have a copy of this RFP for the Southern Illinois Violence Prevention Project, noting that August 2nd, 2019 at 5 p.m. is the due date for the RFP. These can be sent to kidscourtsandschools at gmail.com. Uh, Robin Dodd, myself, Matt Buckman, um, or Judge, retired Chief Judge George Timberlake. Now we're going to put a posting here for YouTube so that you'll have that available. Uh, this video will be posted and available to everyone on YouTube. This project has been focused on 12 to 24 year olds. Um, this project has been in existence for about two years now, and now we're looking to expand to additional providers in Southern Illinois. Within Franklin, Jefferson, and Jackson County, what we're looking for are multiple types of providers that are looking or capable of providing services to these youth that are 12 to 24 and young adults as well as their families. We're specifically looking for evidence-based practices and want to support agencies that want to expand, grow the population, or serve individuals they're not currently serving. The two eligible proposals or eligible applicants are organizations or individuals are eligible to apply, those who are serving Jefferson, Jackson, or Franklin counties. In addition to that, a separate type of application is eligible for anyone who wants to provide services using multi-systemic therapy or high-fidelity wraparound. And I'll talk a little bit further about those um, as we go down. Our mission is to provide supports for at-risk youth in our community, provide and grow the continuum of services, bringing the best quality to get better outcomes, doing that through coordination of multiple sectors and increasing our work that we can do collaboratively. This particular project has a focus on individuals who have experienced adverse childhood experiences. Unfortunately, those who, are, who have been victims are also more likely to find themselves interacting with the juvenile justice system and uh, may even find themselves more likely to carry a weapon or even be involved in a violent crime in their community. What we'd like to be able to do is to address these needs early on, believing that early intervention is a form of prevention to try to reduce further involvement or further um, types of acts that could re-traumatize or further make a person at risk for more issues later on in their life. There's four target areas for service provision. One is victims of trauma. The other is youth engaging in criminal behavior or violence currently. The other is youth development. And the last one is individual and family case management, knowing that those that are struggling with maybe violent behaviors or have experienced trauma in the past, that they do not live in a vacuum or on an island, and that their ecology, their systems that they're interacting with, including their family and their school and their communities, all have an impact on their future behavior. In this RFP, you'll notice descriptions of a few of the treatments that we have selected to support within these communities. One of those is cognitive behavioral intervention for trauma in the schools. This is a group based with individual supplement sessions. It's approximately 10 sessions long. This treatment can be provided in a school or in a community agency in a group format. Also, we are supporting trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, this treatment is typically individual with conjoint parent or caregiver sessions uh, when possible. Additional supports and services are is the Washington Aggression, aggression Interruption Training, Multi-Systemic Therapy, Functional Family Therapy, and High Fidelity Wraparound. Some of these treatments are more intensive than most that are um, available in many community settings. So we wanna provide supports 
for your organization or you as an individual provider that's qualified to provide services through your license or certification, we want to provide support to you to be able to provide these more intensive services. These are some of the best treatment services in the world, um, and we will provide some training and other types of um, capacity building activities for organizations in the Southern Illinois region and that are subcontractors. Case management services have been proven to be very effective as well. Many times this is in conjunction or coordination with probation services, um, but probation or court involvement is not a requirement for those that are eligible for Southern Illinois Violence Prevention Project services. Those individuals can be eligible just based on um, their score on the Childhood Experiences Survey. Um, and that can be a score of four or more adverse childhood experiences. So we perceive that as a pretty low bar um, in efforts to be able to intervene as early as possible. So in conjunction with other services or supports or connecting them with other services and supports, we want to su support your organization to provide individual and family case management services. These services are oftentimes provided by family resource developers. These are family peer providers. Family peer providers that have lived um, through the system, maybe had a, a youth themselves that uh, might have had interaction with the juvenile justice system. They may have had their own interaction with the juvenile justice system or the behavioral health system or special education system, but really looking at those with lived experience as being uh, more capable and having some expertise that will be able to become very valuable for connecting and engaging families in services. Lastly, youth development. What we wanna be able to do is help develop those individuals that may have lower needs in our community, but can um, receive these services early on in life that would be able to make a difference. Botvin Life Skills, Youth Build and Restorative Justice Practices are all practices that we will support through Southern Illinois Violence Prevention Service, Services. Our tool for screening is the Childhood Experiences Survey. And again, four or more ACEs is the eligibility criteria. But some individuals may only report one ACE or adverse childhood experiences, but you know that they're impacted by it. So we do consider other types of referral um, criteria, including a uh, PTSD screener, the Childhood PTSD um, Symptom Scale that um, is freely available and we can share with any of our subcontracting organizations. Following a screening, we do require that all organizations are conducting a comprehensive assessment for every one of our youth. And this comprehensive assessment can be the IM CANS, which your organization may already be doing, or any um, assessment that you deem appropriate. And so we don't want to dictate what type of tool that you're using just that an assessment occurs for each one of those youth. In the budget and for services, what we wanna be able to offer are flexible models that are available based on the needs of your organization, how you're able to expand, or as an individual provider, what your fee structure might entail. The first model is a fee-for-service model. This provides $75 per hour for providers that meet criteria for at least a qualified mental health professional. And $50 per hour for those individuals that are family resource developers or family peer providers. The second model is a cost sharing model. This cost sharing model is one that will, we will support up to 50% of the cost of um, having a new staff person or having an existing staff person to be able to expand into this population. This model is made so that organizations are able to continue to utilize reimbursement mechanisms that already exist within their um, service array. And so a person can or an organization can still bill or get reimbursement by Medicaid for certain services um, that are Medicaid eligible while also we will support up to 50% of the cost of that person or staff person that's providing services. Anytime that the staff person's reimbursement or revenue generated to the organization is beyond 50%, we just ask that there's a reduction in that. So if it's 55% of their um, cost as a physician or as a person in the organization, 
If it's 55%, then we would ask that um, we would only reimburse 45%. But again, as we, as we do this, the goal is that you can still utilize all of the reimbursement mechanisms that already exist, um, which will make sustainability uh, much easier and help us do more with these funds um, versus trying to recreate the wheel. The third model is a case rate model. This model is only available for two treatment services, multi-systemic therapy and high fidelity wraparound. We have a maximum allowable case rate of $10,000 per case for up to six cases for multi-systemic therapy and a maximum high fidelity wraparound of $7,600 per case for up to six cases. Um, unfortunately, that is, those are case rates that are, it's the going rate. Um, we have that for other contracts and that this rate assumes all costs um, that may be incurred from the treatment of these six youth in each one of these programs. Now, organizations can apply as providing all of these services or just one of these services. And those individuals can, individuals, organizations can apply um, to tap into multi-systemic therapy funds or high fidelity wraparound funds as well. The total budget available um, for these organizations that are applying is $259,350. There's a couple of unallowable costs that we cover within the RFP um, that we want to make sure that you're aware of. And um, I'm just going down through the application at this particular point. So the application is very clear. You want to complete your organization name if it's applicable, an agency representative if that's applicable, or if it's a sole provider, individual provider that's licensed or certified, that provider's information would go here. A DUNS number for the organization if um, that organization, if it's an organization that's applying. DUNS numbers are not required for individual applicants. Um, and then providing the address, phone number, and email address. Under the review criteria, you'll see that agency and staff capacity and experience is an important element for 25 points within this application. Within here, we want to talk about, we want you to talk about and share your history, maybe a history of subcontracting with the Illinois Association of Juvenile Justice Councils and SIVPP, um, any, any performance or successes and challenges that you've run into in the past. We want you to share a proposal. What do you propose to do? Are you participating in coalition meetings, participating in trainings? What type of evidence-based practices do you provide um, or plan to provide through this? Knowing that the ones that were mentioned in the RFP are the only approved evidence-based practices um, that we can support through the Southern Illinois Violence Prevention Project. And then um, lastly, how many individuals do you plan on screening? What I would anticipate is that the screening number and assessment number would be higher than the treatment number. And so I would maybe screen 70 individuals, I might then assess 65 individuals, and then I might be able to provide treatment to 50 individuals. And so I could see that number evolving or going, kind of reducing down as we get more intensive or further along in a treatment episode. And then what type of staff will be devoted to this project? Um, this staffing qualification, we want to be able to define who those staff members are and that they are qualified to be able to provide those services. Again, we can provide training and will provide training to some of your staff if they need that. Maybe they need training in uh, individual and family case management or trauma-focused CBT or um, weight programs. We can coordinate a training for your organization and for the region if that's needed. Um, but what types of things are they already trained in? What titles, what positions are you planning on um, devoting to this? And, and what FTE do you plan to devote to this project? Um, and then providing an implementation schedule. What we'd anticipate is that organizations and individuals would start before um, September 1st, but at the latest, September 1st, and then they would continue services all the way into June 30th, uh, which is the end of the state fiscal year and then providing a budget that would define the expenses and how that was determined um, and whether or not you're gonna use cost sharing, cost rates, and or an hourly uh, fee-for-service reimbursement model. And then lastly, the goals and objectives that would be included in that. There are a list of goals and objectives that are part of the Southern Illinois Violence Prevention Project. 
So what we ask is that you keep these goals and objectives, remove any of them that you feel like you cannot accomplish, um, and then identify the number of individuals that you might be providing services to or that you estimate you might provide service to for each one of these. So that concludes the um, overview of the RFP. What we ask is that um, if you have any type of question to email uh, Robin Dodd, uh, the email address will be provided for RFP for the RFP. And then what we're going to be doing is those email emails will be posted online. I and mean, then that also, that link will be provided in the RFP um, so that everybody has those answers available to them um, and so that all of this information is available to any applicant that might need that. We hope that you'll consider working with some of the most vulnerable, um, highest need youth in our community, trying to help us create better communities and better services and supports and um, improve the quality of services within Southern Illinois. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to us. We are available um, and we hope that you'll consider applying. Thank you.